Hi, Kat here for Lightwave Digital. In this video in the continuing getting back to basic series, I want to talk about something called Surface Preset Preview. Basically, we've got an option down here in our drop downs for how we want to display something in any of the different modes that are available to us through the camera, light view, perspective, left, right, front, back, bottom, top, etc. For this, I'm going to create some geometry so we have something to work with so I can demonstrate some of this feature set. So we'll go to the model tab, go and create a primitive. We're going to go and create a gear. And we'll just pop it right in the middle of our scene here. And I'm going to go and create also a wedge that we can also have in our scene. Just push it off in the background here. And maybe something else like a cube or a sphere. Doesn't matter. This is just for demonstration. But now we've got three objects in here. And if we go and open up the surface editor, by creating those objects, they've already been named automatically, which whatever they were for the object type. So we've got gear, wedge, and sphere. All right, now comes the fun part. We're going to engage surface preview, which will bring up a default surface preview that we've got here. And we can, in the surface editor, proceed to edit the material. I've got a great material library here from a preset collection for car paint. So I'm going to add some car paint blue to this object. And let's say I want to go and texture one of the other objects, uh, but I actually want to you know, see what's going on. Um, over here in the gear settings, upper right hand corner of the interface, you'll see a little menu come up. And normally when people hit this menu, they will get presented with the VPR tab, but they don't really pay attention to the surface preview tab. So the surface preview stuff is new in later versions of Lightwave, and I wanted to demonstrate this because many of you have been away for a number of years and you're just coming back to the software or you're a new user and you probably haven't really figured out exactly what this part is used for if you've even discovered this section just yet. So in the surface preview tab, we can see that I've got an active, which is the active column and then the new wedge object. So that corresponds to whatever is actually selected based off of these preview modes. So let's go and see what we've got here. This is a preset object, so it's preset object to sphere. Okay, if I wanted to change that, it would be cylinder, cone, torus, or cube. Well, that's fine, but if I don't want to use the preset object and I actually want to see what the surface is doing on the object in the scene, but I don't want to see the rest of the scene to do this, I can actually go and select my wedge object or the gear object, and we can change this to be the selected object. So whenever I choose an object in here, it'll be that shape, but we're not editing that particular surface. So we need to make sure that we're actually editing the right sur surface because this is the active surface for that object. So let's make sure that we've got the right one selected. All right, so there's our gear. There's the selected object. And we can also choose a particular type of light. We can use all the scene lights for previewing. Or we can just choose a selected light, such as the environment light. And now we'll only see the shading with that environment light applied. Let's go and choose the default distant light. And this is very handy if you want to like edit something just on its own while you still have a very, very complicated scene going on. So what Lightwave's doing here in layout is it's taking whatever that object is, putting it in the perspective view of the surface preview and giving you the ability to see it just as itself, scene object or preset object, if that helps.
and then easily go about changing for each. So let's go grab another preset here. So there's that one. And let's go to this one. You see that we haven't changed here. We need to make sure that our object is a selected object. So that's the sphere object. So let's go and make sure that we've got sphere selected and it'll change. Uh, let's do some smoothing on that. And maybe we'll pull up the specularity and pull up the roughness a little bit. And let's not look at it with just a single light. Let's go and look at it with the scene lights together. So there you go. Now, let's say you've got a scene with a bunch of stuff in here and it's, you know, starting to get confusing as to what you're actually surfacing or, or, or working with. This really helps to reduce the amount of confusion. And as long as you keep track of what your selections are, you can take full advantage of this at any time. Just keep that little window open. You can switch back between anything that you want. But of course, a really good indicator of what's going on is if you've got this surface selected, this is the surface that's being edited. That's just what it's looking at for the surface. And at any time, you want to see the actual object. There you go. Go back to VPR and we can see all of our individual objects are surfaced with those individual presets. Let's go and drop a nicer preset on our sphere. Let's go something a little bit more metallic. Make it look nice and pretty. There you go. A couple of things about the VPR tab, though, is that the surface preview function is tied to the settings in VPR for the default. So if you want to do half mode resolution, you'll see the change. It'll be faster for you to see a preview of the changes that you're making to the editor itself. It also normalize the display if you want. And of course, there are options in VPR for saving out different format images, where they're going to, and of course the color space that they're being saved. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful for you. It's a great, fantastic tool. I do use it quite often for doing texturing and surfacing on objects, and it was instrumental on creating these types of libraries because I could switch back and forth between different objects and different surface types very quickly. And see how the surface would apply to different shapes and how it would perform or look without having to load a variety of different shapes or objects. Just having these basic types of primitives and working with the surface editor and VPR with the surface preview function worked brilliantly. Now, one other thing, a lot of people will like to have their displays set up in such a way that they've got a window that's, you know, maybe the camera view and then maybe on the left view uh, or the left panel, they'll have a different angle or a different view. And you can certainly do that here as well. So in the current scene under viewports, you'll see a function here at the top. It says viewport single. That's my default because I always look to uh, my scenes to the camera almost always. But I do find it handy every once in a while to have the surface preview open, but still being able to you know, walk around, see my my stuff with the camera. So let's go back to the camera. Very handy. And You can change these at any point, depending on what type of arrangement you want. Maybe you need some OpenGL texture shaded solid view for some reason, or perhaps you want to go through a quad view and have one of these as shaded solid or front face wireframe. It's all up to you. So these types of windows, all of them can have VPR engaged in them at any point in time.
whether it's a surface preview or just simply a different angle. And of course, your handy dandy camera, which is where I prefer to be. And at any point in time, you expand it, press the little expansion button in the corner, and it'll return. And you can move these windows individually. Resize. Very handy stuff. And it's available all the time at your fingertips whenever you need it. Just hit D to bring up this window. Look to your current scene under viewport and start making your selections for layout. All right. Thank you for watching.